Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll start learning about the basics of a while loop and how we can use while loop to iterate three of the data types in Python. So let's get into this. So as we have briefly talked about, while loop is another method for iteration in Python. And while loop is useful when you don't know how many times the loop have to iterate and you want to keep iterating as long as the while loop expression evaluates to true. So let's talk about the basic syntax for the while loop and how we can use them. So in this video, I'm assuming that you guys already have the basic concepts for iteration that we've talked about in previous video. So if you need a recap on what iteration is, please refer back to the video in the top right corner. So the syntax for while loop is really simple. The loop starts with a keyword while, and after a while, you need to put an expression that evaluates either into true or first. So for example, if I create a while loop that will always evaluate to true, I can just say while true colon and put the code block below the while. So I can say print hello do programming. And if I run this as is, you will see an infinite loop, meaning infinite iteration because this while loop expression will always evaluate to true and the iteration will keep printing out hello do programming infinitely as you see in the console. And you can stop the iteration by using the control C or click the red square button in the PyCharm right here. So in order for you to control the while loop, meaning to have a control over when to iterate and when not to iterate, you can control them in while loop expression slot right here. So then let me replace this true with the first and try to run this one more time. Then this time you will not see any print statement because while loop only starts its iteration when the expression is true. So the logic here is pretty simple. If you want to iterate, we need to put an expression here that evaluates true. If you want to stop the iteration, then we need to put the expression here that evaluates to first. So then this time, let's try to make this while loop expression be more dynamic. So for example, if I want to make this print statement to be printed out only five times, what should I do? For that, we need to create a variable outside of the while loop first. So let me first create another set of while loop here. So before I create the while loop, I'm going to create a variable count and then set that equal to zero by default and then have a while loop here and then have an expression saying if count is less than 5 then I want to print hello do programming. So the statement that I put into the while loop expression will either evaluate to true or first. So in this case what I'm saying here is that if count is less than 5 then keep printing out the hello do programming. If that is not the case then stop the iteration, meaning we're not going to print out the print statement. So if I run this as is, will the print statement only show up five times? Let's test it out. So let me run this and you will still see infinite iteration here. So let me first stop this and let's talk about why this is happening. So this is happening because even though we have the logic of telling the while loop saying only iterate when count is less than five, we don't have any statements inside the while loop that increments the count by one after each iteration. In other words, the count variable will always be zero for every iteration and that's why you are seeing the infinite loop because this while loop expression count is less than five will always evaluate to true because we are not incrementing the count variable by one after each iteration. So to solve this issue, the only thing that we have to do is to increment the count variable inside the while block. So after the print statement, I'm just going to say count equals to count plus one. So what I'm doing here is that I'm actually taking the existing count value and then I'm doing the plus one and I'm setting that to the count variable again, which is specified outside of the while loop. And just for your information, this statement that I have can be further simplified to count plus equal one, which is another Pythonic way of writing the same statement count equals to count plus one. So now we have this statement here. If I run this one more time, then you will see the hello do programming coming out exactly five times because the while loop expression evaluated to first when the count variable was reached five from this uh, increment statement that we have here. Okay, so then now let's think about a slightly different way of printing out this print statement five times. I know that we created a count variable here and set that equal to zero and we increment the count by one after each iteration. So thinking along the same line, we can also make this count variable to start from five instead of zero and decrement the count variable by one after each iteration, right? So for that method, let me just simply copy and paste this uh, while loop here to below. And let me also comment out all the above. So in here, I'm going to change the count variable to five and then I'm going to also uh, put the equal sign here because it needs to start from five and then also another end statement here and say 
if the count is greater than zero because we don't want the count value to actually go to the negative value and in here i'm going to replace this plus with a minus here and also change the minus here as well so the logic here is that the count will now start from five and in the while loop expression we want to actually say when count is less than or equal to five because without this equal sign uh, the expression will return first for the first iteration because the first iteration we have the count equal to five and we also need another expression and say count is greater than zero and the reason why we need to put this here is because we don't want the count variable to be negative values and we only want to print the statement out five times starting from five to one and as we have learned in the boolean video if you have a two expressions like this with an and statement true and true is true but true and first is first. So what this means is that this entire expression will evaluate to true only when both of the expression are true. And only when this entire expression is true, the while loop will start its iteration. And at the bottom, we want to decrement the count by one this time. So if I run this one more time, then you will see the hello do programming printed out five times just like before. Okay, then now let's talk about how we can iterate through some of the data structures using while loop. So the baseline concept for iteration is identical to for loop, but the only difference here is that we just need to manually control the index for each iteration. So we have a list here, list one with four elements. Let me first create the index here. So index, I'm gonna set to zero, and then I'm gonna create a while loop. And in the expression, I'm gonna say if the index is less than len list one, and the len list one is four, so that if the index is less than four, then we're gonna keep iterating this while loop. And below the while loop, we can say print list one and use the list indexing and then pass the index here. And then in the bottom, just like how we did it before, we're gonna actually increment the index by one. So index plus equal one. So same as before, in the first iteration, the index should be zero. And so it will print out the list one index of zero, which is the element of A. And in the second iteration, index should be 1, so it's going to print out the B, C, and D. Uh, and it's going to stop the iteration when index reaches 4, because 4 is not less than 4. So if I run this one more time, then you will see A, B, C, D printed out. Basically, all the elements in the list 1 printed out line by line for every iteration. So iterating a list using while loop was pretty simple, right? Then let's try to briefly talk about dictionary. How can you iterate through the dictionary data type using the while loop? But before I get into that question, let me briefly recap about the dictionary data type. So dictionary data type is an unordered data type, meaning the index that we generate like above, like the list, doesn't mean much because index doesn't necessarily represent the location of each element within the dictionary. So that in order for us to iterate through the dictionary, we have to actually understand the relationship among the iterable data type and iterator object and python's built-in function next the three terms that i just mentioned iterable data type iterator object and next function are actually the key concepts of iterations in python and this mechanism is being used to iterate through the iterable data types in for loop so as you see in the screen we have an iterable data type in this case a dictionary and we use iter function to make this iterable data type as an iterator object, meaning the actual object where we call the next function on. And from here, we just call the next function for each iteration so that we can move to the next element one by one. And at the end, we raise the stop iteration to stop the iteration once the end of the element has reached. So it may sound complicated, but it's actually not. So let's get into the actual implementation here. So we already have our iterable data type, which is the dict1. Let's try to create an iterator object. So since our purpose is to iterate through the each element in the dict1, consisting of a key and value pair, we want both key and value to be iterated through. So for that, let me use the items method. So I can say dict1.items and as we learned, when you call the items method, it returns the both key and value in a list of tuples inside the view object. Then now let's use the iter function to make this an iterator object. So I'm gonna set this as a variable, dict1 iterator object and set that equal to dict1.items and then we can use the Python built-in function iter to make this a view object into a iterator object. Uh, so now we have an iterator object, let's create a while loop. So I can say while, and then I'm gonna put true, meaning I want to iterate infinitely for now. And then I want to create another variable here, like dict one item, which is the actual item that's gonna be iterated through. And then I'm gonna call the Python's built-in function next. 
and pass the iterator object that we created. So dict1 iterator object. Uh, and then below, I want to print out each item out. So print dict1 item here. So as you see in the screen, what I did here is pretty simple. I first created an iterator object and I'm passing that as the argument for the next function. And then the next function inside the while loop will actually move to the next element one by one using the iterator object that we created. And at the end, we are just printing out the dict1.item. So if I run this as is, you will see all element in the dict1 coming out in a tuple format. And you see a tuple format here because the dict1.item that we used to create the iterator object is actually returning the list of tuple. And you will also see an error called stop iteration. And this error is being thrown because the next function was called when you don't have any more elements to iterate through in dict1. So let me actually run this then you will see the key value format coming out in the dict1 and you will also see the stop iteration error because the next function was called when the dict1 does not have any more elements to iterate through. So in this case, we need to handle this stop iteration error by printing a simple try and accept block. I know that we haven't talked about this try and accept and you might not understand what it exactly do, but just bear with me for a second here. So instead of while block, let me put the try here and then put all the code that we have inside the try. And then in the same line as try, I wanna say accept. And I want to actually catch the specific error, which is called stop iteration colon and then in here i just want to break but just first to actually check i want to say clean uh, stop iteration error was handled and so if i run this one more time then you will see all the elements in the dict1 print out line by line and then you will also see a print message saying the stop iteration error was handled and this means that python actually went inside this except block and ran the print statement as well as the break statement and once the break statement was run the entire iteration within the while loop was just terminated. So this try and accept block, as the name says it, when a code block is inside a try statement, Python will try to run this, so nothing is different from you just print this code without the try statement. But by printing the try statement here, when there is any error caused within the try block, it will instantly go to the accept block, and if the error that was caused from here matches the error that you specified here, in this case the stop iteration, then it will come inside this except block and run whatever the code that we have inside the except block. So in this case, we have a break statement here. So it ran the break statement only when the stop iteration error was thrown. And this error will be thrown when you reach the end of the element in your iterable data type, in our case the dict1. And since we ran the break statement, this infinite rule that we set, the while equal true, was terminated after all the elements are iterated in the dict1. Uh, and just for your information, if you want to just print out the key and value line by line without the tuple format, you can just put the asterisk in front of the dict1.item variable inside the print function. And this will allow us to actually parse out whatever the element that we have in the tuple format in a more plain format uh, with just key and value line by line. So if I run this one more time, then you will see the key value, key value coming out in a more prettier format. Okay, so now we have a method that allows us to iterate through the dictionary data type using the while loop. But I want to let you guys know that the method that we have here is not the most appropriate way of iterating through the dictionary data type. And the reason is because you have a better alternative which is to use the for loop to just iterate through a dictionary rather than us trying to create the iterator object then calling the next method and then to have the try and accept block to catch the stop iteration error to break out from the iteration that we have in the while loop. So even though we have our working implementation here, I strongly recommend you using the for loop when you try to iterate through the dictionary data type as using the for loop will be way easier and simpler because all you have to do is to specify the expression for the for loop and print the key value out. So let me just show you a quick comparison here. So I can do for key and value in dict1.items colon and just print the key and value and if I run this one more time and you will see the exactly same result with a lot less lines of code with a lot less of the logic that you have to actually manually process. So using the while loop when iterating through the dictionary data type may be a bad idea. But on the other hand, I wanted to show you this example because what we have here is the fundamental concept of Python's iteration. And it's really important for you to understand the logic of how the iteration is happening behind the scene. 
Okay guys, that's it for this video. So in today's video, we've talked about the basics of a while loop and we've also had a few examples of how we can iterate through Python's data type using while loop, especially focusing on the concept of iterator and next functions. In our next video, we'll talk about some of the control statements that you can utilize using the while loop with a few of the examples. So please stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed already, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in next videos.